Hi, my name is Allison Clark, and I'm so excited to welcome you to another episode of Cowbells and Conversations, Ideas That Ring. Today I have my friend and kindness sister, Linda Woo Cohen, Woo with me. And today we're going to get ideas of how kindness can really impact our life at a different level. And also, you're going to hear about a very unique project that Linda did. So Linda, take Hi. it away. Introduce yourself. We've known each other in Portland for probably almost 10 years. Yeah. Um, but tell everyone who you are and what you did. Well, thanks, Allison. Before I tell you anything about myself, though, I just want to tell you, Allison, that you were probably one of the first people who I went out to coffee with when I was starting my speaking business. This was probably, I don't know, seven years ago, maybe mm -hmm. six years ago. And you, you kind of envisioned for me what was possible in my business. And I remember that, that conversation because you were already, you know, further along in your professional speaking business. And it stayed with me a long time because I just, I feel like you had this belief of possibility long before I did. So mm -hmm. I'm glad we're still friends and I'm so happy that you were able to do that originally. So. Oh, well, you do have so much potential. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the project that you referred to, I guess, is my 1000 mitzvahs project, which is how I did get into this, um, this business of talking about kindness. Um, and I will just say a mitzvah for anybody who's listening who doesn't know is an act of kindness. It's, uh, it's the Jewish word for an act of kindness or um, a, uh, a good deed, but there actually are commandments. So the 10 commandments are mitzvot. And that's the actual proper Hebrew way to say it. So, um, but I use mitzvahs, the Americanized word. And I took on this project. I woke up in the middle of the night about five weeks after I had lost my father. Um, I took on this project in his memory. And uh, I didn't know what the project would look like. I just had this crazy idea in the middle of the night. And I woke my husband up and I was like, I want to do this thousand mitzvah project. Uh, so that's kind of what started me in January of 2007. Uh, and he helped me start a blog, 1000 Mitzvahs blog, which turned into a book. Mm -hmm. uh, which my book was published in 2012 and then I recorded a TED talk and so it kind of was this snowball effect of I don't know where this started but I started getting on this path and it has it has changed my life so wow so give us some examples of those thousand mitzvahs I mean I say like from the very beginning they were all little simple actions they were nothing you know life-changing really in and of themselves but together and collectively, they definitely changed how I started looking at the world. So everything from, you know, throwing coins in a coin canister at the grocery store, um, uh, you know, sending thank you notes. I'm a huge proponent. I know you are too, Allison, of thank you notes, acknowledging someone when you know they're going through a rough time, reaching out to people, um, changing a roll of toilet paper. I've become famous for my purple roll of toilet paper. Oh, yeah. Uh, just this anonymous little action you do that nobody knows, but it's making the place better than you found it. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the thousandth one, cause all of them were just whatever happened. But the last one was a food drive that we did at a local um, food bank, Sunshine Pantry, not far from my house. My dad was really into cooking and he taught me how to be, he, he was the one who taught me how to cook. Um, so this food drive, we raised like 20, I don't know, two, uh, some number of pounds of food. <laughs> we millions. It was a lot of food at the time, um, but yeah, so, so that was kind of meaningful. That right. Way, so. And then, so once you did that, so you actually did a thousand acts of kindness and they were small, some were bigger. Yeah. And then how has that really influenced your career now? So that was a project you did. And then, so that is who you are. I know that both of us have seen the value of what happens in our own personal life when we do kind acts, right. but how has that really influenced you to help other people, especially in the corporate world. I think that, you know, once you start living your life and the project took two and a half years, I, I'm a type A personality. So initially I thought, oh, I could do it in a year or less, but it did take two and a half years. But I think it began to set me in a pattern because I know, you know, if you do something for 21 days or 30 days, I don't know what the actual change of pattern and habit is, mm -hmm. you start looking for those opportunities and you sort of live your life just really like, how can I be a little more patient? How can I be a little more kind? How can I smile at someone? How can I, you know, sit in somebody else's shoes and see what's going on for them? So I think that all of that began to help me realize that, you know, this works in our personal lives and in our, you know, private and community lives, but what about in the workplace? And mm -hmm. so I did create my economy of kindness workshop to work in, in the workplace with, you know, businesses and associations to talk about how kindness transforms your bottom line. 
Mm -hmm. and we know that we know people will work harder and they'll stay longer and they'll want to be motivated more in a company that really has that culture. I mean, you oh, know for that. sure. That's exactly what you do. So, um, so that's been the work. So, you know, my project kind of for me was the jumping off point to be able to uh, then work with businesses around that same topic of kindness. And mm -hmm. I will say that these days, Allison, that work is really, really important. Oh yes, for you sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, just even it reduces turnover, sick days, you know, people want to stay at a company where they feel valued and also it's a Fun environment. fun environment and so often companies only do an annual review yes. which I always say no offense to those people only do an annual review it's really not working because yeah. Yeah. people need that constant feedback they need that coaching they need that positive support they also need if they have opportunities for improvement but right. cultures need kindness and people will leave your company if you are not kind to them right. you know we always say that people leave individuals they don't leave companies and it's true so the way that we are treating people does totally affect the bottom line absolutely absolutely i talk about recognition reputation and recruitment as the three r's for why a culture of kindness is important and one of the things you said i mean acknowledging your employees and and every and i'm sure you find this too in audiences that you speak to you know people remember being acknowledged and oh, recognized yeah. for years. Oh, I mean, yes. you know, people will say, oh, 10 years ago, such and such happened. It stays with them, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really important. And they save that note that they got, you know, maybe, maybe a doc, maybe it's in healthcare and the doctor that they worked with wrote them the note or somebody, you know, that they saw as a higher up person and mm -hmm. it really was meaningful to them. So oh, for sure. I love, and I'm sure you do too, I love having that conversation because I think it helps the endorphins um, or dopamine, whatever the good, you know, whatever yes. the good, uh, good. Things that's happening in our bodies. It's like when we hear that, we all feel like, oh yeah, that's, you know, I can see why that's happening. And, and in the bottom line, we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. We all want that. We all want that recognition and acknowledgement that I'm, I'm doing something good because at the bottom, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I'm a human being. And my exactly. work is, is a job and it's helping me as a means to the end to get my, you know, the things I need to have in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but my family is probably kind of more important and my health is more important. You know, there are some things that are really valuable. And, and so I always tell managers, it's also really important to see people as a whole person. Exactly. Which may mean flexibility, which may mean you let them go home early because something's going on in their mm -hmm. life. And even if you have something going on in the workplace, you know, treat them like a, like a person. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the handwritten note is something that will stay forever. So it's, I mean, some people might print an email or save a text message um, or, yeah. a, or a voice. I, like, I just kept a couple of voicemails, but letters, handwritten letters. I remember going into an office and the president of a company, it was a division of Kroger, had written this person a letter and they had it framed on their desk because it yeah. meant so much to them. So I think people forget yeah. if you take five minutes a week yeah. to just do something simple to write, it could be on a post-it note, but just something really simple. Yeah. how that truly can and like you said it's unfortunate you know that they'll be 10 years ago as a story right. it'd be great to start seeing people <laughs> take action now right to well do i something. don't know if, i mean i know you and i have been at some of the same conferences you know but we we were probably at the influence conference together where somebody shared it was a it was a consulting firm a coaching firm where he does a happy hour gratitude on friday afternoons and he pops some wine or beer or whatever and their company could be sparkling cider if that's not okay and they yep. send out notes at the end of the week to vendors oh, yes. and clients. And, you know, and then they mail them out. And so I feel like in, in any way that we can encourage that written note, that note of appreciation uh, for, for people who have done something that week or that, you know, mm -hmm. that us. so I love exactly. it. Exactly. And I know about you, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing acknowledgements and recognition, you know, can take different forms. So mm -hmm. at the beginning of a meeting, like you're saying, don't wait for the annual review. No, do stuff at every meeting. Start your meeting with something that your co your you know colleagues are doing that you're happy about or proud about, or some some you know client wrote in and said something about them. Share that. Yes. You know, start your meetings with that. That sets the tone for the meeting. Oh yeah, and it also changes the mindset, so people want to hear your information. Exactly. Yep. And I also just think when I go to my mailbox, I am fortunate, and I'm sure you are too, that I get lovely notes from people and I save them. I have a box that I keep them yeah. and I go through. And, but it's rare that we get this, we get handwritten things in the mail. And now around the holidays, we'll start to see some holiday cards come in, which that also has gone down. So 
not just during the holidays to send that one happy holiday, you know, happy Thanksgiving card, which are lovely, but this is something to do every day. Yeah. With that. So something that happened at a recent conference that I was at, which you might want to implement this because this was something they did. They had, they had little kindness cards, little thank mm -hmm. you cards that were all, everybody had them in their little notebook that they gave out that day. And they asked people, this was like a group of a couple hundred um, leaders of a hospital, asked them to send them out while they were sitting together. And they sort of had a mail delivery while we were all together. It was very- Oh, cool. to give each other? Yes. Oh, fun. They had, like a little, they had a little hanging, you know, um, paper or um, clothespin. Oh, yeah. And, and people could go and look on the mail board to see if they had gotten something. I thought that was really, really clever. So. It's like Valentine's Day when we were kids. Exactly. <laughs> you do hope that everybody's getting one, right? Right. It's not like one guy getting 10 of them. And, yeah. Right. I, I thought that um, was cool. So the holidays obviously are coming upon us right now. Thanksgiving's going to be in a couple of weeks. Uh, what are some of the things that you do to really make sure kindness is top of mind with some of your holidays? And then, you know, how does that, how does that really give you more energy? Right. Um, I mean, I remember when the kids were little, so we both have um, emptiness recently, yes. so kids in college, but um, I remember when my kids were little at Thanksgiving, having them write something they were grateful for and thankful mm -hmm. for. I'm sure a lot of people do that. So, yep. um, and then we run into Hanukkah and Hanukkah this year actually coincides with Christmas. So that's kind of exciting oh. for us when they sort of overlap. Um, it's a pretty minor holiday for us though. It's gotten really much bigger because of the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say about being a Jewish person going through the Christmas season is I have noticed how frantic people get. I feel mm -hmm. like people who are trying to get their cookies done and their shopping done and their, you know, everything, just the freneticism that happens in December. And as a Jewish person, because our holiday is not like that, really, I mean, we give gifts like, pajamas and socks. I mean, right. we're really, it's a small holiday with eight days and always customarily you get little eight gifts, you know? Yep. Um, don't ask my kids about that because they were always like, but these other kids are getting, you know, whatever. On holiday. Um, <laughs> but I just sort of, I feel like I'm able to sort of watch that mm. kind of freneticism that happens for my colleagues and my friends who are celebrating Christmas. And I think the, just remind people about having a little extra patience, trying not to assume you can do everything at that holiday time. I mean, it's similar to my Passover season because Passover is when we clean our kitchens, clean everything, cook like so much food. And so for us, the, week, the, you know, the weeks leading up to Passover, if you observe that holiday in that traditional way are a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I understand that and I understand the need to try to do everything, but I think that you, you know, I think in the holiday seasons, it's kind of nice to remember self-care a little bit. and. Mm -hmm self-kindness, you know, and what would be, what would be okay that I can say no to so that I don't have to feel great like advice. I have no time for, yeah, give yourself grace. And do that. Yep. Good. Cause it can be very stressful. And then you kind of forget why we celebrate, you yeah. know, and also why people only say why they're grateful on Thanksgiving. It's like yeah. you can practice gratitude all year long and yeah. you can make your favorite recipes all year long. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that people only do in the holidays I know that if they did some of those traditions all year long, that it truly would bring joy and really to be able to spread that kindness, you know, throughout the entire year. Yeah. I don't know if you have a practice for this. So at the Jewish high holidays, which just happened in October, we were um, visiting our in-laws in, at a different synagogue and we heard the rabbi talk about a prayer called the Modeani prayer, which is a Jewish prayer mm -hmm. that you're supposed to say when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you're supposed to utter in the morning is thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me my soul back this morning and allowing me the opportunity to like live another day. And mm -hmm. I, I remember that prayer, but I'd forgotten it. So mm -hmm. since the high holidays, I have woken up every day and mm -hmm. tried to say the little prayer. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I don't know if you have a practice to do that, mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's such a wonderful way to start your day. Like you oh, said, for sure. yes. starting it by saying, what am I grateful for? I'm oh yeah. I'm breathing. I'm alive. I get to yes. see whatever it's going to bring today, whatever miracles are coming my way. So. Yes. I'm yes. And I, I am definitely someone who practices gratitude and even like I try to exercise depending on wh where I am. If I'm traveling, it's harder, right. but I try to exercise every morning if I'm in town and right. I always am grateful that I can use my body, you know, and I think about my friends who can't yeah. and just the small things like I'm alive. Right. I have a house, you know, that I have shelter, you know, the right. basic things, right. but I, I know that gratitude really does build that foundation for kindness. So that is going to be the cowbell idea. Woo! 
Can I do my little bells? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love I like it. But you know. But it's your bell. Yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining us. It really is to be, to be grateful, um, to give yourself self-care during the holidays, but also to remember at work that when we can practice kindness, it truly does affect the bottom line. So yeah. appreciate out loud, start your meetings with appreciation. And thank you for reminding me the happy hour fun on Fridays, because that'd be yeah. a great practice for companies to get into just yeah. to block time to show other people around them, vendors and coworkers, uh, why they're grateful. So thank you for joining us. Yeah. Have a lovely Thanksgiving and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks, Allison. Thank you.